just long enough to go down there. Hi guys, Mike from We Build Stuff. Today we're gonna start on adding your audio amp, choosing your paint and painting, making custom L trim for your upper marquee, drilling your control panel holes, wiring the buttons and joysticks, and finally some testing. If you're just joining us, don't forget to watch the previous parts where it shows how I built the rest of the cabinet. This is totally one of those special jigsaws that makes fun sounds, you know? I got everything filed and sanded and smooth and the little amp slides in perfectly. I'm just gonna hold that down with some screws. So now that the whole thing is pretty much built, I went to go get some paint. I ended up using interior eggshell style paint because I kind of like the texture of it on the outside of the arcade cabinet. Instead of that smooth, smooth, perfect look, I like the little bumpies. It reflects light and looks really nice. Give everything a really quick sand to make it smoother and then fill up all the little uh, scratches and mistakes that the paint won't hide. All right, time to prime it all so the good paint sticks to it. So if you look closely, you can see the little bumpies on top with the uh, red there. I really like that reflection. Um, it just, it's a cool little texture. Personal preference, paint it the way you want to. A lot of people just do a basic base coat or none at all and put a giant sticker or some kind of vinyl artwork attached to it. Not for me on this one though. So today, priming's done. First coat of paint on the arcade in all the important spots. There's no need to paint the inside. That's a waste of paint. The other parts have been painted as well. They are currently drying. Color scheme is black and red. Now, in the past, I have used angle iron and just used that to hold on my upper marquee. That's the cool part with the artwork. I decided to make my own out of some sheet metal. This is just some 22 gauge galvanized. And because I have access to it, I made my own. This is just very simple. Rectangles, bend a little bit, drill some holes. So just like everything else in this project, I am customizing every single piece. That's kind of a, a curse, but it's so much fun to make these. Paint time. So if you're looking for a socket like this, I believe it is called an IEC C14 320, something like that. You'll see me wire this up later in the video. I find if it doesn't fit, I just drill it or hit it with a hammer. Whatever one works best for you.
Now, while I'm not sure of the exact same speaker setup, I pretty much just looked up for speakers with a grill that was about the size I was looking for. Something between a four and a five inch is gonna have plenty of power for those, you know, really high tech, fancy, retro 8-bit audio sounds. So I have a hole that's drilled here in the front of the screen marquee. This hole is going to be used for the IR receivers that are going to be behind it. One will be the remote for the TV in case any changes need to be made through there. And the other one is this little device here. This is going to be hooked up to lights. This is the RGB control box IR remote control. And there's a little IR receiver that's going to be hidden underneath there. Also has a remote here. So this piece goes on top of the control panel. It's going to make it just look a little bit cooler and shiny since I'm not adding decals and stuff to it. This one's just going to be red with the buttons. As you can see here, I've kind of laid it out in Photoshop. That was fun. And uh, that's kind of the layout and look I'm going for. I'm using white and black buttons and joysticks. I find the more times that I drill pilot holes, the less time I get sad. If I drill those pilot holes first and then uh, drill it with my 1 and 1 8 Forstner bit, it's going to work a whole lot better. This also allows me to transfer my design directly to my control panel. Now a drill press would be way faster, however, I said I was going to do my best to do this project with mostly hand tools or power hand tools. Now I keep telling myself that I'm known far and wide for eyeballing, you know, measurements. Well, that's, that's kind of just what I do here. I get it as straight as I can. Uh, there's going to be a little cover that covers the main hole out of the joystick, but I'm still going to measure it mostly and get it lined up. This is going to be held on with four bolts and nylock nuts. Now these bolts are eventually going to go underneath that plastic sheet, so you won't be able to loosen them or tighten them, but they shouldn't be going anywhere. Because the plastic sheet is going on top, I need to add a countersink so that the head of the bolt is flush with the top of the control panel. Now some of my favorite parts of doing these arcade cabinets is when they are finally starting to come together. They're painted and I can finally assemble things and not have to keep taking them on and off, on and off to check for fit. We're going to see this thing fire up real soon. There are so many different ways to attach a screen to the inside of an arcade cabinet. This worked for me in this project, but what I started doing after this, I do this as well, but I add a little bit of exhaust strapping behind it. They screw into those four holes in the back of the screen. I think they're called visa mounts. And uh, I screw that into the side of the cabinet as well. As long as it doesn't fall out, you know, that's a good day. So this is all nice and wired up. It's pretty sweet. I'm very happy with this so far.
For many of these buttons, it doesn't really matter how you align them. However, it looks really nice if you can kind of make them all look even on the back. That way your micro switches are all pointing the same direction and it makes cable management and wires just look a little bit nicer. Despite the fact that it's hidden on the inside, it is nice to be able to take things on and off easily. So these are the encoders that came with my joystick and button set. They have a set of numbers and letters on the back. So I'm going to decide where they're all going to go in. That way both of my sides, player one and player two, will be plugged into the same thing. And the configuration in Rico Box will just make it work. I'm going to go ahead and wire those up. I find attaching my cables to my micro switch before I put them on my buttons tends to work a little bit easier. It's easier for me to get things in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach those all now. Hopefully, there's no broken connections. That's going to be a pain to troubleshoot if I need to. Now, it doesn't really matter which color goes where, because when the button is pressed, it's going to basically just close the circuit and it's going to work. I only have two choices anyways, so literally it's just like I'm taking wires and touching them and then taking them on and off. That's it. Ah, see, here's a problem. This one, here's one in the kit that came and it is missing a little quick connect. So it might have fallen off in the box. I'm gonna see if I have any extra ones kicking around. So lucky for me, I found an old cable that I'm gonna be able to just pop right in there. This uses, I believe it's called a DuPont, DuPont connector. And that is the same as what's in there. So I'm gonna pop that blue wire out and stick this one in. If you're lucky, you never have to worry about these things. There we go, that just popped out. It has the same style connector. And let's just push this one right back in. All right, so. That didn't all work out, but this one did. So I've just snipped it, attached those. I didn't feel like having to recrimp this to the blue wire. So I've just kind of pigtailed it all together, soldered it, covered it up so there's no chance of a short circuit. Now let's get back to putting all this stuff together. So I just realized that I had a bunch of extras I didn't actually need to do that, but that's okay. Live and learn. Let's keep on going. So now it's time to refer back to my little drawing here and plug them all into the correct spots on the USB keyboard encoder. I'm just going to screw it right on there. So I'll drill a little pilot hole and screw it on. So there is, I think that's, that's for player two. Everything looks pretty clean. I'll throw a zap strap around this to kind of tie them together. Or I might just keep them loose in case we need to make changes. But that is on there pretty good. When I test it all, I'll be able to see if there's any dead micro switches or anything. And I've got extra micro switches if needed. Great thing about this, everything can be taken apart and changed if needed, whether it's for upgrades or not. Now, sometimes it's good to have extra micro switches. I snapped that one, but luckily, I've got extras.
All right, so player one is now wired up. The USB encoder is attached there. Buttons and everything are on the front. We're almost ready to go install this and go do some testing. Actually pretty clean, much cleaner than some of my other builds. Next thing to add is the top of the joysticks. Little covers here. And to hold them on, I could just screw them in place really tight or I can add some Loctite. This, uh, this one's seen some use. With the plastic over top, this looks so cool. I really like the clean look of it. Now what you could do, if you wanted to, you could have added artwork and then put the plastic on top. But I really just like this color scheme, so we're gonna stick with this. Now I don't show how to wire everything else because you might have different hardware than me, whether you're using a Raspberry Pi, an old droid, or even a small computer inside there. There are so many different types of front ends for these arcade machines. I've been using Ricobox for years since I started out. I like it because it's simple and I don't have to do a whole lot of programming. If you want to do programming and really customize things, yes, there are many different front ends, choices, RetroPie, and other stuff like that. I wish I could give credit to them all, but it is super easy to find the resources. I taught myself all this just by watching other YouTube videos and reading forums. If I came across the part where I was stuck, I would just Google it and look it up. Setting up the controllers is pretty easy as long as they are responding. If they're not responding, that means you might have a dead wire, dead micro switch, or something else on the inside that might require further attention. Now that I can confirm that my buttons are actually doing something, I finally get to test this with something more than just an Xbox controller or a keyboard. So it looks like all my buttons are working. I tried to test a variety of games that incorporate, you know, all six buttons. But we ain't done yet. It's time to move on to T-Molding. This is what gives it that final fancy look. 